Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt and today we're brewing a Galaxy Smash IPA with Kvike yeast. I haven't really just brewed a simple recipe like this in a long time, so I'm excited to kind of have a relaxing brew day today. If you like grain to glass videos or just brewing content in general, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also make sure to like this video. Anyway guys, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the Beer Smith 3 recipe notes and then we're gonna go right into the brew day. Okay, so to review the Smash Galaxy IPA recipe, naturally these are very simple in nature because Smash stands for single malt and single hop beer. So for the single malt, we're using pale malt two row, but we're using 11 pounds of that. And then for the single hop, we're using Galaxy. The reason I picked Galaxy is because I kind of wanted a tropical fruit flavor IPA, and I thought Galaxy would be good to use for that. And also for the yeast choice, we use Kvyking from Imperial Yeast. Uh, when you ferment this at higher temperatures, this can also impart some tropical fruit flavor. So I thought naturally this would be a good yeast selection for this style as well. Also, since this is Kvike, we are planning for a two day fermentation at 90 degrees. This is also the second video where I'm gonna be doing a sparge as well. I typically just do full volume mashes but I wanna try out sparging to see how that impacts efficiency. So we're also gonna be doing a sparge as well. For the starter information, uh, the Imperial yeast uses 200 billion yeast cells in their packs, so there's no need for a starter here. For the water chemistry, I'm actually using a profile from the Apartment Brewers Galaxy IPA recipe. Um, so it's gonna be higher on the sulfates to chloride since it is an IPA, you want this to be a little on the dry side. Other than that, uh, it's a pretty standard recipe. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the brew day. First, we double crush our grains to make sure we have a very fine crush. We also measure out our brewing salts and prep the water. Next, we dough in. After 15 minutes, we take a pH reading and it comes out a little high at 5.4 pH. Our target was 5.3, so we add 0.8 milliliters of lactic acid. During the mash, we prep our sparge water with brewing salts and we start heating it up. After a 60 minute mash and a 10 minute mash out, we lift the grain basket up and get ready to sparge. We slowly pour hot water over the grain basket to wash the grains. After sparging, we press on the grains to get as much wort out as we can. Our pre-boil gravity measured out to around 1063, which was 8 points over target. Once we get to a boil, we add 1 ounce of Galaxy Hops at 60 minutes, 0.5 ounces at 10 minutes, and 0.5 ounces at 5 minutes. With around 5 minutes left, we run boiling wort through the pump slide and chiller to sanitize the equipment. After 5 minutes is up, we turn the cold water to the plate chiller to start rapidly chilling the wort. Once the wort is around 90 degrees, we move the wort over to the fermenter. Then we aerate the wort to get a lot of oxygen in the wort for fermentation. Our OG measures out to around 1069, which is around 6 points over target. We then pitch our Kviking yeast from Imperial Yeast. After two days in the fermenter at 90 degrees, we take a final gravity reading to make sure fermentation is complete and measures out to around 10-12, which was on target. Lastly, we move the beer over to a purged keg with a low O2 transfer. Okay, so we are at the end of the video where I talk about my brew day and then also talk about tasting notes at the end. So aroma, mouthfeel, flavor, etc. Um, so there isn't a whole lot to talk about on the brew day. The brew day went pretty smooth. Um, there's only just a few things I want to talk about. The uh, Obviously we used the Kvyking from Imperial Yeast and that fermented out in two days. Um, so that actually turned out really well. We added a lot of yeast nutrient and made sure to aerate the beer really well. And we also pitched at 90 degrees. Uh, we also held 90 degrees for two days as well. 
um, but that was really smooth. I've had now experience with, I think, three different types of Kvike now, and they all work pretty similar. You pitch at 90, you aerate really well, and as long as you hold the right temp, I mean, they usually ferment in around two days, which is great, uh, because I'm a pretty impatient guy when it comes to beer. Another thing I noticed, and this is kind of more related to the hardware I'm using, the claw hammer, Bruner bag system, that uh, when you're cooling the warts, I usually just have the, uh, the tube that connects from the plate chiller and goes into the kettle and I just leave it there. Um, I need to make sure to, to put that in the right spot because I'm finding that a, a pull section of the kettle is much hotter than what the sensor is picking up. Uh, whenever I put this in the fermenter, I, this and my last Kvike beer, um, I put put the uh, the liquid or the beer in the fermenter at 90 degrees from what the temperature sensor said, but it ended up being like 100 or 110 degrees, and that's just because there's parts of the kettle that are very hot. I gotta make sure to stir the wort, uh, and also this is just a reminder for people who use claw hammer that the sensor is kind of in one spot. So you wanna make sure to stir to make sure that you're getting a consistent read and temperature before you move it into the fermenter. I've never brewed a smashed beer before, uh, which is uh, again, probably pretty odd. But like I said I, in the past, I kind of brewed my safe three or four beers and this YouTube channel has really encouraged me to try different things. Um, and I wanted something fruity and tropical and I was doing a lot of research and it seems like Galaxy was the one to go with. And, I also wanted to find a yeast that would also complement that and it seemed like the Kvyking from Imperial Yeast uh, put off a lot of tropical flavors as well. Um, but a lot of a lot of Kvyke strains actually produce a lot of tropical notes when you ferment at higher degrees, um, except Lutra. So that's kind of what I was shooting for, is to like a tropical, simple IPA. And I think I did that with the beer. Okay, so we can jump into appearance, aroma, mouthfeel, and flavor. The first thing is appearance. As you can tell with the appearance, I would say it's a it's an amber color or straw-like color. Um, it's pretty. It's just two row. It's just base malt, so you're not gonna get a lot of the darker colors that you would get from a lot of other IPAs if you have caramel malt. Uh, but this is just two row, so naturally it's gonna be fairly light in SRM. Another thing too, uh, it has a very white head, and the head lingers really really well with this, which is interesting because I didn't use anything for head retention. I poured this beer, I wanna say about seven or eight minutes ago, and it still has like a half an inch of foam on top and it's, it's sticking around pretty well. Um, so I'm actually very impressed with the, the head retention on this as well. Next, we can go into aroma. So as expected, there's only Galaxy in this. Uh, so you're not getting a ton of malt aroma from this. Uh, you're pretty much just getting a lot of citrus and tropical notes, a sweet fruit notes. Next, we can go into mouthfeel. Yeah, I mean, for mouthfeel, it's, it's uh, I would say it ranges on the light to medium light mouthfeel. And lastly, flavor. So similar to aroma, it has uh, a lot of citrus notes. That's probably the first thing that comes through. Um, and then you're also getting more, again, tropical notes and sweet fruit flavor. It's also, this is also very dry though, uh, and, it, and it's, it's pretty bitter as well. Um, I want to say that it actually tastes a little bit um, on the more, more bitter side compared to what I calculated in my Beersmith 3 notes. I want to I say that that has a lot to do with my water chemistry. I think we leaned pretty heavy on the sulfates here, and you can really tell because it definitely imparts a dry finish on your palate, um, which is expected. Um, but it is definitely contributing to how bitter this is being perceived. But yeah, that about covers it guys. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you guys learned something. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Uh, feel free to comment in the comment section below if you've ever made a smash beer and what kind of hops you guys used when you're making your smash beer. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.